All right. Um, then, uh, Commissioner Stebbins, on the minutes, please. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, colleagues, in your packet, you have the minutes from the July 16th, 2020 meeting. That was a pretty extensive one. Thank you, Shar, for helping me pulling the notes together. Uh, I would move their approval subject to any corrections uh, for typographical errors or any other non material matters. Commissioner, do you have any edits or questions for Commissioner Stebbins? Commissioner Zunica, okay, no. Okay, um, then do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Take a roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Zunica? Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. And I vote yes. Uh, Sure, we're all set. Thank you. Excellent job. Five zero. Moving on to item number three, Executive Director Wells. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. I am uh, have been really looking forward to this uh, first item, the MGC staffing update. Uh, I do want to uh, make an announcement this morning. Uh, as you know, when I was put in the position, uh, the Executive Director, one of the uh, asked was to look at the agency structure and uh, my first priority was to look at what had been uh, deemed the ombudsman's office and now that the casino licensees have been awarded and the three casinos are up and running the functions have somewhat shifted from the original role of the ombudsman uh, so we're no longer going to have that title of the ombudsman's office and we are creating the division of community affairs and Joe Delaney has been promoted to chief of that division. So the functions of that division uh, will include the management of the community mitigation fund. And as the commission is aware, uh, that's a multi-million dollar annual fund. That's a big project. And the focus will not only be on the guidelines, uh, the review and the awards, but also overview of an oversight of the grant contracts. Uh, that, that division will also uh, have the task of compliance, of oversight of compliance by the licensees on commitments to not only MGC, but also uh, the state and to local communities. That oversight will include host community agreements, surrounding community agreements, license conditions, Section 61 findings, RFA2 commitments, uh, and licensees' capital expenditure requirements. That division will also be in charge of the coordination of quarterly and annual reports by the licensees, uh, working with our various advisory committees and subcommittees, providing support and planning there, and working with the chair on recommended appointments uh, to those committees and subcommittees. That role of the chief will also be the lead on community coordination and uh, liaise with licensees and community representatives, advisory committee reps, and others on commission activities, programs, and priorities. The division will also be responsible for not only the license renewal process, which we just saw with the Plainridge Park Casino, but also that interim review. As you know, the, uh, the category one casinos, the um, casinos in region A and region B, that's a 15 year license term. So this division will be responsible for what kind of interim process are we gonna have to review we're not just doing everything at the 15 year mark. So uh, Joe will be responsible for overseeing that process. Joe's been with the commission since 2016 as the construction project oversight manager. And then he stepped in to oversee the ombudsman's office in March of 2020. From 2006 till 2016, he worked at the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection as a deputy director of municipal services. Among other things in that position, he was the senior management manager of the state revolving fund loan program. And that provides over $400 million per year in low interest rate finance, low interest rate financing to cities and towns for water and sewer infrastructure projects. Uh, he served as the town engineer in Reading, a consultant with Arthur D. Little, and also as different uh, project engineer and project manager positions. And he has a degree in uh, civil engineering from Northeastern University. So I really would like to publicly acknowledge just the outstanding, outstanding job that Joe Delaney has done for this commission. 
uh, what kind of person he is, what kind of leadership uh, he provides through the commission. I am so grateful uh, for having the chance to work with him. I'm thrilled today to be able to announce this promotion. And I just want to congratulate you, Joe, and publicly acknowledge that we have moved into this uh, new era of the Commission of Division of Community Affairs, and I'm thrilled that you're taking the lead here. So thank you very much for everything, and congratulations. Thanks, Karen. I don't know if you want to say anything now. You're welcome. No, so I, I, I don't really have any okay. remarks prepared, so. <laughs> okay. that's, a, that's fine. So that is my big announcement uh, for today. I'm thrilled. and. Uh, that's all I have for the, uh, the first agenda item. Uh, the second agenda item is uh, the casino relicensing status. And I am going to turn that over to Loretta Lilios and Bruce Barron uh, for the update, that, similar to what we've been getting in commission meetings past. Good, good morning, Chair. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. I'm here uh, with, with Bruce, and really there are no significant changes or updates since we updated you at the last meeting. Operations at each of the three gaming establishments are continuing. Uh, Plain Ridge Park Casino is, has returned to a 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week uh, schedule. Encore has opened some additional amenities in the retail and weekend spa arenas. Uh, MGM is continuing to have one floor of its hotel in operation for invited guests and is offering weekend uh, service at its uh, full service Chandler's uh, Steakhouse. I know Bruce and his team are continuing with their monitoring. I'd invite him to uh, share uh, any any of the observations that he and his team have made uh, since we updated you last. Uh, there really isn't anything additional to add from my uh, last report to you at the last meeting. Uh, things have been running very smoothly, uh, which is a tribute to the three properties. Uh, uh, there have been no incidents or, or anything worthwhile reporting to you. Any so questions? that may fall in the no news is good news category. I'm not sure, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. At this yeah. point, that's that's very true. That was going to be my acknowledgement, Loretta. Any yeah. questions um, for, uh, for um, either Loretta or Bruce, Commissioner Cameron? Yes. Um, first of all, congratulations to Joe Delaney. Much, uh, you know, we've all seen firsthand his work and his ability to step up when we needed him um, you know, to do some really important work for the commission and he has done that and he, he briefs us well. I'm just, I'm very happy for Joe and uh, much, much deserved Joe. Um, secondly, I just, Loretta, you mentioned, um, did you mention that the, um, the MGM hotel one quarter occupancy, is that what you said? One floor. Uh, one, one floor, floor, I'm sorry, one floor one occupancy. Floor is that, um, is that due to that's that's all the volume they have? I know we're trying to be very careful with numbers and distancing, and uh, but is that is that just because of demand? What is your um, their program has been that they are opening that floor of the hotel for invited guests only for invited uh, so guests? That, yes, so that's been their uh, business plan uh, at this uh, point in time. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions, commissioners? No, uh, I, I will take that as good news and, uh, and, and continue on. Excellent, and, and we do appreciate these updates. I think Commissioner O'Brien, you've noted that uh, they're really helpful to have on a continuing basis. So uh, we don't mind that they're brief like this and reporting you know, nothing exceptional. So I think uh, we can keep this cadence going. Commissioners, you agree at this point? Okay, thank you. Right. All right, Karen, anything else? No, not nothing there. Um, I just as a reminder, I do have to drop off. I'll be on the phone and call, I'll be on a, a phone line. Uh, and then uh, if, when I'm out of the box, uh, you have Loretta and you have Derek on the meeting for any questions and, and I'll hopefully be jumping back on by the end. Yes, thank you. Um, and uh, uh, we appreciate it. I think we'll be just fine. Yeah. Um, 
and we'll continue then with item number four, Loretta Lilios for the, um, and I guess uh, General Counsel Grossman. Thank you. And really, I was going to invite uh, Todd and uh, Bruce to uh, cover the uh, amendments to the rules portion. I think we also have um, Bert Kane, too, who's yes. maybe and, helping and Carrie. Carrie, right. Carrie, okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my apologies. I do see that it's um, really uh, Carrie's um, the lead on this. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Thank you. I believe that um, Bruce is actually going to kick off this portion of the agenda for it related to the rules of the game. Good morning again, Bruce. <laughs> Good morning. This is kind of like tag you're it. So I, <laughs> I will take it. Uh, morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, this portion uh, has to do with changes to the rules of the game. Uh, we're here to present to you, uh, this is mostly uh, clean up to the current rules, uh, little bits and pieces that need, needed to be clarified, including changes to the game of blackjack. Uh, uh, here with me to present are uh, my field manager, Burke Kane, the compliance manager, Sterl Carpenter, and of course, one of our uh, uh, legal counsels, Carrie Torsi. Uh, Burke Kane will present. Uh, you ready, Burke? Yes, apparently tag I'm it now, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Good nice morning. to see everybody. As Bruce introduced, we have some additions, deletions, clarifications, some procedural changes for rules of the game. It may be easier for you uh, commissioners to ask questions as we're going along, but that's up to you guys. Um, in the packet, there's a memorandum for us to go over. Okay, we have it up there. Uh, below are the proposed changes to all the rules of the games on the Mass Gaming website. These changes are being made for continuity throughout the game's rules to reduce errors by the dealers who deal multiple games. Other changes include the modernization of all the technology used in gaming, as well as social distancing protocols that are needed during the time of pandemic. Table games use one to eight decks of cards at a time. In doing so, the table games that use one deck at a time will traditionally have two decks on that game. Decks will be exchanged to every other hand, and the, the decks of cards, the backs, will be of completely different colors. Although these uh, games will have two decks on them, only one deck will be used at a time. For that reason, we will call these games one deck games for this memo. Blackjack games have the option by regulation to use two to eight decks at one time in the operation of the game. In an attempt to expedite the game, most licensees will use a shuffle machine to shuffle the cards for the dealer. So there'll be two batches of cards of different colored backs, and they'll be alternated in and out of the game. In the section below, we will uh, split the games into two groups. The group A games will be all the one deck games. For example, Caribbean stud poker, four card poker, let it ride, three card poker, or ultimate Texas Hold'em, or some of the more common games we'll find. Group B games are the multi-deck variety, mini Bach, blackjack, casino war, Spanish 21, or some examples. Some general changes to the rules of the game. Manual shuffle has been removed from all the group A one deck games. The option to manually shuffle any one deck game has been removed from all the games but poker. This change is, is to remove any game's protection concerns in regards to the manually shuffling of a deck. If a licensee wishes to perform a manual, sh manual shuffle on a one deck game, they're gonna have to submit that procedure and protection to the IAB for approval. The cut card, we have an addition to the group B multi-deck game. All games that allow a cut card to be placed by the dealer has had additional language added due to the COVID-19. Presently, the regulation reads the dealer call in the game shall perform one of the following options. 
The dealer will offer the stack of cards with the backs facing away from them to the players to be cut. And we've added new language that says, or at the casino's discretion, the dealer will cut the stack of cards for the table. Cut card uniformity, group B games, multi-deck games. All the cards that offer the patron the ability to cut the cards have been changed to offer the cut card counterclockwise, if not already offered that way. All games will offer the cut card this way so that the process is the same for all the uh, dealers, all the games. The reg will now read and working counterclockwise around the table shall offer the stack of cards to the participant to uh, cut the cards. This is basically because uh, dealers can work in a, a pit that might have all of these multiple, multiple games in it. And they'll routinely go from a Texas Hold'em game to a three card poker game to a four card poker game. So to uh, alleviate mistakes that they may have in offering the cut card, we're always gonna ask them to offer it counterclockwise. Okay. <clears throat> Option to use pre-shuffled or pre-inspected cards on a one deck game. This is being removed because manufacturers simply do not produce one deck of uh, cards pre-shuffled. So the obsolete doesn't need to be in that race. Added language to the rules due to advances in shuffler technology. This is uh, with the one deck type A games. The following language was added with all the one deck shufflers that require a different amount of cards to be de dealt. The uh, automatic shufflers are so advanced or programmed that they could they can deal a, a certain number of cards depending on the game that that shuffler is programmed for. For instance, on three card poker, obviously we need three cards. Caribbean stud, you would need five cards. And four card poker, uh, four cards. Okay, updating the showing of the cards. This is an update or removal for type A and type B games. Oh, can you scroll back up? Please. Am I right? I think we're in the right spot there. Okay. Uh, the there rules we go. regarding how cards must be displayed face up on a game awaiting play stated that the cards needed to be to be displayed to the patron prior to the shuffle. This process has been updated due to technology and game protection. It is for this reason that the requirement of showing the faces of the decks have been revised. Cards on a table now may be displayed face up or face down. It's now an option and not a requirement. Uh, clarification of terminology in addition to type A games. This is a simple addition. Dealing shoes has been edited to now read dealing shoe or machine. Uh, irregularity section on all one deck games or removal. Following section was removed on one deck games due to removal of the manual shuffle. All automated card shuffling devices or automated dealing shoes shall be removed from a gaming table before any other method of shuffling or dealing may be utilized at that table. There were some common small grammatical fixes that we put in the rules of the game section. And now specific changes made to the rules of the game. Blackjack switch. We have a removal clarification. Section four, the following section was, re was removed due to it being obsolete. The Bart Carter shuffle is no longer gonna be in our regulation. We do have a section of our regulation that explains how a manual shuffle will be performed, including the plug, the turn, the ruffle, et cetera. So Bart Carter, Bart Bart Carter shuffle is now obsolete and will be removed. A section eight language correction to the following. After the dealer has blackjack, all losing wagers shall be collected. As has been changed to that, previously it had all losing insurance wagers would be collected. If a dealer has blackjack, an insurance wager is a winner. So this was an editorial clarification. Uh, section 15. In any table game, when a card is delivered incorrectly, the card will not under any circumstances be placed backwards on the game. 
As stated in the irregularity section of the specific game, the card will move forward to the next player. It'll be used as the dealer's card or it'll be burned. The licensee shall allow one or more players out of the hand when the dealer is found to make this error. Section N, if a dealer mistakenly forgets to burn a card, the hand will continue as if no mistake had been made. Uh, blackjack section, I believe Carrie has an introductory comment for this section. Yes, thank you. So just a little bit of background on this one before Burke runs through the changes to the rules. Uh, as you know, there were two lawsuits filed against Encore and MGM that related to the payout of Blackjack and the odds for that payout. Um, one of the main issues raised in the decisions that were issued on the motions to dismiss were was that um, there was confusion as to what the term six to five meant when six to five meant uh, was referring to a six to five game variation versus when it was referring to six to five payout odds. So the changes that Burke's going to discuss address these concerns and clarify the meaning of six to five by eliminating the six to five variation from the game of blackjack. And we think that that uh, addresses the issues raised. So I'll turn it back to Burke to run through those changes. Yes, so as uh, Carrie just stated, the term six to five variation is defined as a one or two deck hand dealt game of blackjack. It was introduced at casino floor years ago to mimic what most casual gamblers thought the game of blackjack should look like. All references of six to five variation have been removed from the rules in its entirety. Uh, section one under blackjack, we're adding a new definition called a pat hand. A pat hand is a hand in which is of sufficient value to play as it is, as it is dealt without needing to draw additional hands. Section six, after each full set of cards is placed in the shoe, the dealer shall remove the first card face downwards and place it in the discard rack. Each gaming licensee may, at its discretion, offer the patrons the option not to burn this card when a new dealer comes to the game. Section six. Removal of the double shoe reference. Double shoe reference was um, invented back in the 80s, pre-shuffle machine time. They would actually have two dealing shoes on a blackjack game and uh, it never really took off. I never actually saw it. And this is, since it's obsolete, we now have, shuff we now have shufflers. This section of the reg is um, being revised and double shoe reference is being removed. Section seven, clarification. Uh, section seven it, it discusses the payment of blackjack, the even money payment option for certain insurance wagers. We have this section here uh, represented in its entirety from A to D because all the references to six to five variation have now been removed. Section 15, an addition. If the dealer mistakenly forgets to burn a card, the hand will continue as if no mistake had been made. Section 19, a clarifying statement. The definition of a progressive on a blackjack game shall be as follows. An additional wager is a side bet traditionally $1 or $5 to the main wager, which a percentage of the wager goes into a pool of money. This pool increments upwards until the stated combination is achieved by the player. There are many different progressive wagers now available for licensees to offer. So this statement um, talks about that. To help clarify this, um, originally progressive blackjack was a game, but now there's so many progressive blackjack wagers, we just wanted to help clarify uh, what this new definition would be. Uh, inclusion of all the blackjacks in the same section, we have a relocation. The following section was removed from section 31 and placed with all the other progressive wagers in section 19. This way they're all in one link location. Section 31 had the blazing sevens uh, progressive bet and now we pulled that over 
for uh, consistency's sake to section 19. And below is all of the blazing seven language for the reg. We can go down to free bet, <clears throat> free bet edition section 11. In any table when a card is delivered incorrectly, the card will not under any circumstance be placed backwards in the game. As stated in the irregularity section of the specific game, the card will move forward to the next player, used as the dealer's card, or burned. The licensee shall allow one or more players out of the hand when the dealer is found to make this mistake. Section N, if the dealer mistakenly forgets to burn a card, the hand will continue as if no mistake was made. Red Dog, I don't know if we'll ever see Red Dog. An old game where we're adding uh, this clarifying statement, Section D, if the dealer mistakenly forgets to burn a card, the hand will continue as if no mistake has been made. Vanish 21, we're adding the uh, definition for a pat hand. Casino War Edition, Section 10. The verbiage about not moving a card backwards, as stated previously, and the licensee shall allow one or more players out of the hand if the dealer is found to have made this error. Section F, if the dealer mistakenly forgets to burn a card, the hand will continue as if no mistake had been made. I think that concludes the uh, updates, additions, clarifications for the rules of the game. Uh, special thanks to our compliance manager, Cyril Carpenter, our experienced gaming agents with gaming background who helped assist in uh, these revisions. Yeah. Any okay. questions? Questions, Commissioner. Commissioner Zuniga. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Burke and Carrie and, and, and Bruce. Um, it really seems like there's a lot of work that went into fine tuning a lot of these, um, a lot of these rules and, and regulations. Um, can I uh, just for the on the on the topic of the six to five removal of uh, the six to five variation is a term that is now being removed. So the one that survives is the six to five payout. Yeah, um, the, of the odds of the payout. odds the odds on the blackjack which is only six to five in some cases the usually the lower the, the lower uh, limits and um, three to two on all the other upper limits um, is there anything in the regulations that stipulates when or whether to use one or the other or it's it all at the discretion of the casinos currently it's up to the casinos. Uh, it's a business decision on the casinos part. So there's nothing relative to six to five applies to the one deck cards uh, or the multiple deck uh, games or anything like that? No, there isn't. It, it used to be that one game called blackjack variation six to five where you would pay six to five. But now there's uh, nothing in the reg that states that. We're going to go over 146.13 uh, right now also, and that details more about uh, how the, the odds have to be stated on the layout, et cetera, like that. Okay. Thank you. So other questions for um, Burke and team with respect to what's presented so far? You know, I would just echo, uh, you know, we've had the benefit of, of uh, proper briefings and that those briefings were enormously helpful and I think um, Commissioner O'Brien you and I shared our briefing and I think that we learned from Bruce that this is uh, an exercise that not necessarily all jurisdictions do to go and, and modernize and bring up their, uh, the rules up to date so this is really important and very helpful for us so thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would like to reiterate that that's so important, it's in particular where there's confusion, um, to be proactive and go in and make a change so that patrons are not confused is really important. Um, so I, I commend the team for being proactive and um, keeping us uh, modernized when it comes to, that's right. to our rules of the game. So thanks to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so 
um, so that we can get just a little further confused. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue on. Um, very, very helpful so far. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't know if you'd like to um, take a motion for a vote on the rules and then move on to the equipment reg or or we could do Should we do that later. at this juncture? Okay. Um, I guess that I want to make sure we've exhausted every question that there, there's no need to go on to the next phase, Enrique, to help clarify the rules for you. No, there isn't. And I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. And I was just going to perhaps um, state for the record that this is because this is not a regulation, we would not go through the promulgation process. Our regs um, would would have us just vote on these and then they would be gone effective, Gary, is that the case? That's right, that's right. Okay. And I just wanted to, uh, I think I heard this correctly, um, Carrie, with respect to the decision that uh, the, the judge in a helpful fashion um, brought up some of the potential need for clarity, um, that was a, that decision dismissed that case, correct? So there's no other further action on that case, correct? Uh, well, there are two. The The Superior Court case was dismissed. Um, the District Court case was dismissed in part and uh, the motion to dismiss was, dis was granted in part and denied in part. So that one is still moving forward. Okay, excellent, thank you. And, and um, if I'm remembering correctly, this work was well under underway prior to that decision. I think it was helpful to, you know, for all to know that clarity. Um, and, you know, we don't want any confusion as Commissioner Cameron pointed out. Yes. All right, thank you. So do I have a motion with respect to uh, the rules of the game as presented with the changes? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd move to amend the various rules of the game as posted on the Commission's website in the manner discussed here today and as included in the Commissioner's packet. Second. Thank you. Last minute questions. Great work. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes. Five zero, Shara. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. You're welcome. All right. So next uh, in your packet, you have a draft of 205 CMR 146.13. This is the regulation that um, deals with the physical characteristics for the actual table for the game of blackjack. Um, so we've uh, made some changes to the rules to clarify um, on that end. Um, but with respect to litigation, as we discussed, another issue that was raised um, was that the, uh, this regulation stated that the layout would read that Blackjack pays, that pays three to two. So we're amending that section of the regulation so that the layout will read Blackjack pays three to two or six to five, depending on what odds are being offered at that particular table. And as Bruce mentioned, that's at the discretion of the licensee. Um, so I believe Burke uh, is going to run through some of these other changes in this regulation as well. Okay, we have up on the screen 146.13, blackjack table, physical char characteristics inspections. Uh, under section three, as uh, Carrie just stated, the following inscription shall appear on the blackjack layout. Blackjack will pay three to two, or blackjack will pay six to five. Under section B, the rules, the draw rules of one of the following have to be imprinted on the table. Dealer must draw to 16 and stand on all 17s, or the dealer must hit on solve 17. And C must be on the table, insurance pays two to one. Uh, section four, if the gaming licensee offers Blackjack rules variation, the blackjack layout shall have imprinted on it the appropriate rules or payout odds observed for the particular version of blackjack being offered, which may include blackjack pays one to one, the dealer must draw to 16 and stand on all 17s, or the dealer must hit soft 17s, 
C, the dealer hold card would be dealt face up or any other similar language as approved by the assistant director of IAB. Um, moving down. Bert, yes. Bert, I, I do have a question. Um, in what instances um, the blackjack pays one to one? There's a specific rules for that game. Uh, Sterl having a strong uh, background in the uh, being an old pit boss. Cheryl, can you help us on that version of that? Sure. Um, the, the, that rule pertains to a version of blackjack in which the casino will allow the patron to see both cards. But since you have the advantage of seeing that the dealer has 16 dealt to him, that you're only paying blackjacks at one to one. Okay. And Thank it will you. be posted on the game. Yes, you're welcome. I've I've seen this game on a casino floor. It it uh, it didn't last long. Um, they could put it back out. It was kind of gimmicky, as you can see, and I don't think the public uh, grabbed a hold of it years ago. And I haven't seen it up here yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, section five. Each blackjack table should have a drop box and a tip box attached to it with the location of said boxes on the same side of the gaming table, but on opposite sides of the dealer, or on an approved area as approved by the uh, assistant director of IEB. Because of the rather large shuffling machines on some of these games, it makes it a problem sometimes to have the tip box opposite the drop box. And with approval, we will allow them to tell us what might work out for them better. Okay, no changes, small changes, editorials in six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, they changed the spot, um, 11, change gaming establishment to a game supervisor, just a small editorial change. It changes in 12. Section 13, if a gaming licensee offers a match to dealer wager pursuant to the authorized rules of the game of blackjack, the blackjack table shall contain section B, a layout inscription or sign posted at the table indicating the payout odds for the match to dealer wager. So before we were asking that it was inscribed in the layout, now we're adding the fact that you could put a sign up in addition to that. Section 14, uh, we're striking out the whole six to five blackjack variation as, as Carrie has told us. <clears throat> and because we struck out section 14, the rest of the document is simply a uh, renumbering down to uh, 18, which is now 17. Any questions about 146.13? This is a regulatory change. That's so right. In terms of implementation, it's like a 90 day window. Is that that's right, typically it's 50 to 90 days, somewhere in there. Any questions for Burke and Carrie? I see no from Commissioner Cameron. Again, we've had the benefit of a good briefing and also a really clear memorandum uh, that when you walk us through it again, it's great um, reinforcement. Thank you. Um, without any further questions, we would want to um, start the, the uh, voting process. We also have the, um, the small business statement, correct? Yeah. Ready for a motion? I am. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that the commission approve the small business impact statement for 205 CMR 146.13, blackjack table, card reader device, physical characteristics, inspections, 
uh, as included in the commissioner's packet. Second. Thank you. Any questions on that? Edits. Okay, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zinnica. Aye. And Commissioner Steppens. Aye. Thank you. I vote yes, 5-0. Moving on to the regulation. Madam Chair, I further move that the Commission adopt the version of C uh, 205 CMR 146.13 Blackjack Table, Card Reader Device, Physical Characteristics, Inspections, as included in the Commissioner's Packet, and authorize the staff to take necessary steps to begin the regulation promulgation process. Second. Okay. Any further questions on that? And moving ahead, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Five zero, I vote yes, thank you. Excellent work. We're all nodding our heads, uh, Bruce, in case you didn't see that, but everybody was giving you the thumbs up, your entire team. Burke, thank, thank you. you. Sterl, thank you. Carrie, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And um, we'll, we'll move on then to um, item 4C on roulette. Sure. I think we're starting with you, Loretta. Thank you. Yes, sure. So um, Encore and MGM have requested to reintroduce uh, roulette at their gaming establishments. And back in June, uh, when you adopted the minimum health and safety requirements for the reopening of the casinos uh, following the closure uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, at that time, you determined that neither craps nor roulette was permitted at that time. And you acknowledged that the games offerings could change as circumstances evolve. So the Category one casinos have now requested that roulette be allowed to be reintroduced and we have worked with them to identify health and safety measures that could be implemented with roulette. And in doing so, we tried to hew closely to the measures that the commission already approved for the blackjack style games. You uh, have a document in your packet that lists the measures we uh, identified, and I am going to share that uh, now. Um, and as you know, one of our obligations with a request uh, like this is that we consult with the Department of Public Health. And to that end, we did provide the department with the list of the same measures that's in your packet and that we're looking at uh, now. Uh, the department raised no objections to the reintroduction of the game and communicated that it is comfortable with doing so in conjunction with the minimum safety measures outlined here. And the department also considered that the gaming jurisdictions in the states contiguous to Massachusetts, that's Rhode Island and Connecticut, along with New York and New Jersey are uh, currently offering roulette. The measures that we've identified uh, are that there would be a maximum of three players per table. Uh, as you know, there can be nine or more seated uh, players uh, in uh, you know, other uh, circumstances at roulette, along with uh, players in standing positions around the table actively engaged in the game. Under these requirements, there would be a maximum of three players and all would require, be required to be seated uh, with no uh, spectators or uh, patrons uh, congregating around the uh, tables. Uh, players would be separated by plexiglass barriers of the same measurements as the uh, blackjack style tables, uh, not less than six feet high, with a minimum of four feet separating uh, the seats. The original request from the licensees was for three to four players per table, but we couldn't consistently get this measurement of the 48 inches with the four players. So that explains why it's a 
three player uh, request. Of the dealer at each table would be separated by a plexiglass barrier. Uh, again, not less than six feet tall. There would be a pass through window uh, uh, at hand level uh, there. Um, again, uh, generally consistent with the black chop jack stable, uh, table uh, configurations. Sanitization of chips would occur when they went to the cage and that would be at a minimum on a daily basis. Hand sanitizers on each table. Uh, Encore has requested that not more than 16 roulette tables be permitted. That would be uh, addition of 48 players. Uh, MGM has requested not more than seven. That would be uh, 21 players. Uh, importantly, although your initial occupancy formula was based on gaming positions, the addition of gaming positions by roulette would not be counted in that formula. So the occupancy numbers would stay the same. Uh, and the actual layout requirements would require, be required to be approved uh, by IEB and, and Bruce's team before becoming operational. Uh, the other measures that apply throughout the uh, property as a whole uh, would continue uh, to be in effect. Uh, the six foot social distancing, the masks, uh, covering the nose and mouth, no food on the casino floor, beverages only while uh, seated, uh, the general cleaning and sanitization, the uh, HVAC uh, air quality measures uh, as well. Uh, so that is the summary uh, of the uh, measure, uh, measures that we've identified and are bringing forward for your consideration uh, today. Um, there Loretta, could I, could I yes. share a photo of the, the table? Oh, please. That'd be helpful. Yes, yeah. please. Uh, I don't know if you're still sharing, but I'll stop my share. See if I can. Thank you. Share. Okay. And can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. And yes. I do have a question about yeah. this picture. I'm glad that it shows what I wondered about. One. Um, one of the uh, details that you point out is that the players for roulette will be seated, and that was important right. for the plexiglass. But the dealer stands. Correct. For the um, and the, 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 the dealer is six foot high. I should add that. Right. So if the dealer's standing and that dealer happens to be taller than six feet, is that a challenge? Or can uh, most of the time the dealer is only up here when the placement of the chips when the ball's rolled, he'll take a step back or so, so he will be back from the table for he can view the whole layout here. Uh, so really the proximity to the table for the dealer isn't really an issue. All the players will be seated and will be down. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we'll yep. be down at this level. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think the plexiglass, I don't know you can see is actually up here. Yeah, so I'm just looking at this particular um, dealer's height. It looks like it yeah. accommodates um, very yeah. it accommodates it nicely here. But yeah. it did occur to me, um, unlike the blackjack style tables where everyone stays seated, in this case the the dealer must um, stand in order to place the so, ball. So does the dealer in blackjack, though he has to stand as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. There is. I I don't know if this is part of what what you're asking, uh, Chair, but um, it, it occurs to me that when, when the dealer, the dealer is far away from the players because of the table. Yeah. And that when, including the, with the plexiglass, and when the dealer needs to go collect the chips far away, he or she is going to sort of lean. Reach down. Yeah. Reach down uh, because of the table, which, yeah. which can, you know. And I do understand them, that the roulette. them at a lower level. And I do understand the roulette dealer is quite removed with us, particularly when we only have three players. Right. Okay. I, I had a question. Um, Bruce, uh, do you, to your knowledge, um, you just listed the states that are now allowing roulette. Has anyone put this additional measure in, which is the um, not allowed to, um, to bet once the ball is in motion? 
So where the dealer waves his hand or her hand. And Not um, so is, is that a measure that we're, we're uh, contemplating, but or is it used that, in other jurisdictions? I have not brought that up yet, but after, uh, uh, if we do a, a proof roulette, that would be something I would request of you uh, to put it in, is that uh, we would, because of the plexiglass blocking sound, and this is a very verbal game, we would request that no wagers be allowed to be made after the ball starts to spin. And that would eliminate that, that uh, games protection uh, problem that we'd see. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's very reasonable and makes sense because if you've been around a roulette table, people are constantly speaking loudly and, you know, engaged verbally. Um, so I do think uh, that's a great measure. I just didn't know if you knew if it was used anywhere else. Not, not to my knowledge. Uh, it was uh, uh, Burks and my concern from the beginning with roulette and actually craps is when we discussed that. Both those games are so verbal that we were concerned people would, would take a shot at, uh, you know, say, oh, I had that there. You just didn't hear what I said. This eliminates that problem altogether. And obviously, I'm oh, sorry. I'm Go right ahead, Commissioner. I, I said, and obviously, I know as your practice is, and it's a very good practice to get these rule changes out to the licensees before they come to us and to see what they may or may, may not have a concern with. So there was no concern with this one, right? Uh, we, we discussed these with them. A uh, matter of fact, I don't know if you can see it, but this is Encore. They already placed a sign on here, hoping that this gets passed that says, you got to place your bet before the, <laughs> the spin. <laughs> right, so the signage will be clear. The patrons yeah. will understand what the new rule is for safety purposes. Okay, great, right. thank so, you. So um, uh, Commissioner Cameron has raised a question about some of the proposed uh, integrity uh, uh, modifications. Does it make sense, Loretta, for us to, even though I think if we are thinking of um, allowing for that, that we take those into consideration right now as well and go through them? Absolutely, and it is in your packet. And, yes. Um, uh, Bruce, before we move wanted, on, I'm sorry. Just yes. so, yeah. Yeah, before we move on, I just I have a question. Can somebody just give me the the measurements of the table and the shot that we're looking at right now, in terms uh, of play, center player seat to dealer as he's approaching the, the table? I don't have that that right here, but the seats, uh, mid seat to mid seat, are 34 inches across. I don't have that in another file that I have, but uh, they're 34 inches uh, between seats. 34 inches between the seats? Correct. So uh, th this minimum uh, requirement. I, I'm not saying that these seats are placed correctly here. Right. Okay. Okay. I, mean, okay. Uh, okay. I just asked for some pictures of, of the uh, table with the plexiglass on it. Uh, and it. they rushed these to me yesterday. The other ones I had I had cracks and roulette kind of mixed together. So, Loretta, do you want to clarify? And, and we did, uh, Commissioner O'Brien, I did see photographs with, you know, the tape measure laid out seat to seat uh, with the 48 inches and some of the placements around the mocked up table, it was even a little more than 48. Uh, so I have seen it and I know Bruce has seen it as well, uh, that the placement is able to be done uh, with the minimum of 48. And again, that was why uh, the the um, packet that's coming to you is with the three seats, mm -hmm. three players per table, and not the four because the four was too tough to get the 48 inches at consistently. And then and what's the closest that the dealer comes to any seated player when he or she has to come up to the table? Uh, I don't. I don't even think it's 48 inches, to be honest with you. Okay. So as long as it's not crossing the 48 inches. Yes. Yeah. Just a um, reminder: the rule for social distancing on our gaming floor is, let, is let me four feet you. plus four feet Wait, plus plexi, otherwise okay. six feet. Yeah. Can you see this other uh, photo? Yep. You'll see it. Uh, there's a, a divider that comes out here. A divider that comes out yep. here. He's pretty well protected on this corner as well. Right. I'm just, I wanted to confirm that at no point does it get less than the 48, even with the seats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, again, 48 with plexi, six feet right. out, and we're achieving that. Great. Uh, Bruce, just a, just a quick question. If you take the, the photo you're currently showing, if I'm sitting at this end of the table, can the dealer help me 
put a chip up at the other end of the table instead yeah. of reaching out and reaching over, crossing yeah. hands or whatever with yes, some of the other can. players? It, yeah, if you, you need help you can, and you want to make a single zero wager, you would uh, you only have three people at the table, the, the dealer will help you place a, a wager anywhere on the yeah, no, I, from, from our, my chat with you and Burke, I, I, I like the fact that uh, the steps we're taking here are really adding to the integrity of the game. Um, Loretta, a quick question for you. Um, I know we're approving us, you have us considering an approval for a certain number of tables. Uh, do you expect to come back to us if uh, our licensees seek to add tables? Uh, yes, we would because that would be yeah we definitely would on uh, on this uh, on this game because the approval is specified you know with the maximum number of games so we would come back if they if they asked to do more and I'm not sure uh, Bruce you may know better but I'm not sure that they actually will have the maximum number in operation you know at all times. Uh, I would be shocked if they asked for more tables per se. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Can, can I ask Loretta also, I, um, did you get an answer as to whether or not the reintroduction of roulette um, would then potentially lead to the rehire of any of the dealers? I, I did get an answer to that. Um, uh, the answer that I got was for uh, at Encore, uh, it would be a minimum of 60 rehires. And at MGM, I didn't get a number, uh, but I got it would lead to some rehires, but the number was uncertain. Okay, thank you. Loretta, that was 6060? Yes, that was what was communicated to me, okay. yes. That's, that's significant. <laughs> and again, uh, Loretta, just to emphasize, it won't change the capacity number it's really an embellishment to their business options right that and that's the way it was communicated to me that they want to you know give patrons additional options uh, and are agreeing uh, to not increasing using this increase in gaming positions uh, to the formula so the occupancy limits would stay the same uh, from the formula you approved back in June. And of course, they're not nearing those occupancy numbers now. Um, so I think offering the options to the uh, players is what makes business sense. So I would just reiterate, um, with respect to the physical space, I think Commissioner Cameron raised it in one of our early meetings is that if we did have a uh, dealer who's particularly tall, uh, that they would be able to have the, you know, would take advantage of an additional uh, shield or, or uh, some kind of uh, a screening if, um, in fact, his or her face were above that six foot um, plexiglass. It sounds as though it's not a, a, a big problem given the distance that they can achieve here, but I would like to certainly, if there is someone who surpasses six feet has have that uh, safety precaution available. Should we so go through Chief, some of the, Is that a measure that you would like to explicitly add here? Or is have, that a, a, you know, a um, advisory, uh, you know, informing the licensees of that? Or did you want to actually add a, add a measure? They may not have a practical issue. Um, but if they did, I would hope that they would recognize it. Um, I'm not sure if it needs to be codified in any formal fashion. Okay. okay. Uh, with respect to um, sharing the next part of the, um, the document so that we can think about the integrity of the, the game and how it's impacted. Okay. So here we have the rules of roulette and there is a highlighted new portion that I will go to uh, that talks about what. Uh, I think it's on the last page. Yeah. So under the section on rotation of the wheel and ball, 
as a temporary rule in conjunction with the COVID-19 related health and safety measures. All bets must be placed prior to the spin and a sign shall be placed at the table stating that no bets are allowed once the ball is in motion. The dealer shall wave their hand over the roulette layout prior to the spin and say in a clear and concise voice, no more bets. Questions on this? Commissioner um, Cameron and Commissioner uh, Brian, I can't see your faces, so if you have a uh, question. No questions. They, um, they answered everything already, so thank you. Commissioner Brian, you're all set. I'm so awesome. I just have a process question. Does that need to be an emergency reg in order for us to implement it upon the opening or? Carrie, do you want to just jump in? Sure, uh, it's not a regulation, it's the rule of the game. Oh, so right. um, we actually, this was also in, roulette was in the packet right. um, that was part of item A. So we've taken that version, cleaned it up, and then this is an additional change to it. So it's just a rule, okay, great, thank you. Any further questions? All right, so um, I know that we have to have a vote on this. If we proceed, this gives the um, licensees, the two licensees with table games, an additional option without impacting the bottom line capacity. And um, at this juncture, we did say um, when we first uh, considered these guidelines and then when we considered an earlier request to expand um, to roulette that we would always take into consideration where we were from the public health metrics perspective and with the RETA's update and consultation as we are required um, with respect to the Department of Public Health this seems to be a, a, a time where this measure is reasonable and acceptable so um, that was just one of the commitments we made to always keep that as a priority in mind. And, and of course, we're considering the business options for our licensees right now. Um, Madam Chair, I do want to reiterate that in terms of timing. Um, I think two of the critical parts of this analysis are that it does not increase the occupancy cap, that the licensees are in fact um, aware of that and, and in fact sort of proactively indicating that when they ask for this. Um, and I also think we now have a history of watching the licensees and the patron compliance and our yeah. ability to enforce. Um, yeah. It is, you know, the numbers are not static. They are trending in, a, in an opposite direction of where everyone would like to see. But on balance, I think if you look at uh, the integrity of the game, the protections in place, the lack of increase to occupancy, the additional rehires, um, that would occur as a result. I think it's, it is an appropriate time now uh, to discuss this and vote on this as a commission. Commissioner, I think you raised a, a really uh, good points and, and help us think about framing it correctly. You know, we do wish some of the trends were pointing in a, in a different direction, but what we have been able to see is considerable compliance uh, with respect to the patrons and our licensees. Commissioner Cameron's nodding. Do you want I, to add? Yes, I was just going to say that, that they, uh, when Commissioner O'Brien said we now have a record, and it is a positive record, they are yes. working hard to comply uh, with with the rules and, and, and are doing a good job at that. And I think the numbers of uh, cases within a casino reflect that, they are minimal. Um, here in our jurisdiction. That's not the case everywhere. So I, I think um, certainly the licensees have earned the right to ask this, ask for this additional offering. And um, I know that I'm convinced that the safety measures that are outlined here um, are, are appropriate and actually probably stronger than anywhere else with the, with the added uh, addition of, um, you know, the dealer not taking bets after after that ball is uh, in play, so um, so yeah, I, I would agree with Commissioner O'Brien that those measures are appropriate, and it is really important to think about those some of these individuals getting their jobs back. Commissioner Stebbins or Commissioner Zinnica, do you wish to add or enhance? No, Confirm. just to agree with with all of that. I think it's well put, and I think uh, as Commissioner uh, O'Brien and Cameron say. For all those reasons, it's very prudent and they've earned that right to ask for it. 
I would agree. So uh, bottom line is we continue to appreciate our licensees vigilance. So and thank them for that. So do we have a, a motion if you're prepared to move? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that the commission adopt the minimum requirements for the reintroduction of roulette at the category one gaming establishments as those requirements are set forth in the document discussed today. Second. Thank you. With no further questions or comments, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. I vote yes, 5-0. Thank you, uh, Loretta and Bruce and team for uh, very careful consideration as we expand that option to our, our uh, licensees. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Madam, Madam Chair, apologies for the inter interruption, but we would also be looking for a motion to adopt that updated rule for roulette. Um, I believe you have that in front of you as well. I have it. Yeah, sorry about that, Carrie. Uh, Madam Chair, I further move to amend the rules of the game for roulette as posted on the Commission's website in the manner discussed here today and is included in the Commissioner's packet. Second. And any further questions on that? Straightforward. Excellent. Um, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Well, yes, five zero. Thank you, Shara. Um, so that's all great work completed. Um, we have a, a number five again with, um, with Joe Delaney. And Joe, repeat your official new title uh, Chief of Community Affairs. Chief of Community Affairs. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cameron passed on. Um, I think the sentiment we all share how well deserved um, this promotion is. And I know that uh, from my perspective, I find all of your briefings and your public briefings to be so clear and so accessible. And for that, I'm very appreciative. So thank you. Thank so you. now you've got, you've got a, a piece of business that's pretty straightforward today. Yes, as my first great act of, as Chief of Community Affairs, we have a, a pretty simple item in front of you. Um, as you know, the Gaming Policy Advisory Committee has uh, three subcommittees, and the Commission has an appointment on each of those subcommittees, uh, first one being the Subcommittee on Community Mitigation, um, which Bruce Stebbins has been uh, performing admirably in that role uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, we have the Public Safety Subcommittee, uh, which uh, we have Eileen O'Brien as the uh, uh, commission member, and we also have the Addiction Services Subcommittee, uh, where uh, Mark Vanderlinden has been serving on that uh, subcommittee. Um, so we are just uh, simply recommending the reappointment of those same folks to those same positions. Any questions for Joe? Oh, just, to, just, to, just to clarify, I would be, Commissioner Cameron has been heavily involved in public safety. This is something we've been talking about for quite some time in terms of me a taking over. A actually, and we did vote last year. Um, right. So this is a reappointment, yeah. Right. Um, but the transition's been going on. And, been ongoing. And, I just wanted to acknowledge that, I, yeah, I didn't want yeah. to be dismissive of Commissioner Cameron's contributions. Nope. But, uh, Commissioner O'Brien, I suspect the two of us will always be interested in public safety for no matter what we do in our careers going forward. So I um, certainly um, uh, am very supportive of you in this role and will support you in any way you see fit. Yeah. Other questions? If, if I may just also state for the record and background, um, even though it's a reappointment of uh, Mark van der Linden for the Addiction Services Subcommittee, it is a subcommittee that um, unfortunately we have not been able to put um, together uh, quite uh, in the past, but there's renewed energy. And I know uh, you chair have been uh, trying and communicating with the governor's office, uh, as well as um, you know the other stakeholders to, to action this, to, to make this um, 
committee uh, happen because it's um, not only a requirement of the statute, but there's important feedback that we really could use from, from uh, members. Yes. <clears throat> and, and so this designation today presumes that that will be an, an activated subcommittee with Mark representing the commission. Yep. So. Any further questions? And uh, for Joe, do I have a motion? I have a uh, question, actually. I mean, um, I'm not so sure I'm going to participate in a vote that pertains to me. Do we break it up? I'm wondering uh, if we should break it up. I was just going to. So that we resolve that conundrum for Commissioner Stephens yeah. and myself? I, I would like, I was just thinking I would like it to be broken up so that, uh, although you could, in fact, vote for yourselves. But right. I understand. Right. So why don't we do it one step at a time, the Community Mitigation Subcommittee. Do I have a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that uh, the Commission appoint Commissioner Bruce Stebbins as representative of the Community Mitigation Advisory Subcommittee. Second. Thank you. Commissioner, uh, I'm assuming no further discussion, except a big thank you, Commissioner Stebbins, for your leadership on this effort and the partnership you have with everybody involved on the team. Glad um, Joe still wants to have me on. <laughs> Stay tuned. He's got a new, a new promotion, so we'll see. Um, so we'll go ahead with the vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stevens. I'm going to politely abstain, Madam Chair. Thank you. And of course, I vote strong yes. Thank you. So four and a one abstention. Now we'll move to the uh, subcommittee on public safety, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, oh, I'm sorry. You, go you, ahead, uh, Colonel. Commissioner, uh, I would just, uh, I would be very pleased to recommend that we reappoint Commissioner Eileen O'Brien. Uh, to represent the Commission on the Public Safety Subcommittee. Second that. Okay. Again, are no further questions? Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Abstain. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. An emphatic aye. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and, and I too vote yes enthusiastically. So four with one abstention. And now for the uh, Addictive Services Subcommittee. Madam Chair, I'll move that the Commission appoint Mark van der Linden, Director of Research and Responsible Gaming, as representative to the Addiction Services Subcommittee. Second. Thank you. No further questions. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes. Five zero. Moving on to item number six, Commissioner updates. Raise your hand if you have one. Well, okay, just, just to add. Just to add my um, congratulations to Joe on, on the well job that he does and the promotion that now reflects a lot of the work that he has already been undertaking in the past few months um, on the community mitigation um, uh, process. So thank you, Joe, for all the work you do and, and, um, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. I would also offer my congratulations. And I like the new title because it's somewhat vague that we can always assign you some more responsibilities. Fair enough. My hunch is, my hunch is he'd readily accept them. So. Absolutely. Any further questions? I think I um, just want to pass along a good luck to Commissioner Cameron. I know you've got your speaking gig. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of... Um, of uh, meeting virtually um, Mike Noel, and he did say, pass on a big hello, he would see you today. Oh, so, really? Okay, yeah. terrific. 
Thank you yes, for I that. Know. And I thank you to our team because of course, with their expertise, I'm, I'm very well prepped. So thanks to everybody. Good luck. Okay, with no further updates, um, I just want to note it's 1118. Enrique, you're not going to be late for lunch today. So um, that's a good, a good sign. We appreciate it. Uh, and again, excellent work to, um, you know, the, the discussion today um, really um, was at the core of the Gaming Commission's functions and responsibilities as a gaming regulator. And I, I think all of us just appreciated the detail and the um, thoroughness of the preparation. So thank you. Any further? All right. I'll take a motion. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zinnica. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Vote yes. 5-0. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you.